<laughs> Hello, Divorce Network. I am Cooperative Divorce Attorney Erica England. And I'm Neil Forrester, Certified Family Law Specialist here at Forrester Purcell Stoll. You know us from our weekly live radio show, Split Decisions. It is designed to help everyone who's impacted by divorce, and everybody is in some way, right? That's absolutely right. All of us. Even if you're not divorcing yourself, you might be dating someone who is, or be a child of divorce, or even have a friend or a family member that you want to help make better split decisions, and we want to help you do that. Absolutely right. So today we are here with the number one consideration for parenting plans, something I see go terribly wrong all the time as a mediator and as a family law attorney. All the time things are coming up in parenting plans that should be handled in a much better way. So we're going to tell you the number one consideration. But before we get there, if you would like more information on living your best divorce life and supporting split decisions for yourself and your family, you can visit us at splitdecisions.pro. We'll also be coming back every week with new content for you, video series, blogging, to give you more information and support. Very exciting. So I am in a bunch of Facebook parenting groups, like single parents and divorce groups. And I see all of the time the question asked, what should I put in my parenting plan? So how do you think that works out, Neil, when a bunch of people on Facebook chime in? <laughs> I think that's one of the worst things that you could possibly ever look at is Facebook or any social media for I mean, parenting plan you advice. you can be listening to us on Facebook. Well, we're the only resource, really, you should be listening to. <laughs> but I see it go really wrong for two reasons. Because first, when you're asking someone what to put in your parenting plan and they're chiming back with what is in their parenting plan, you could be getting information that doesn't fit you or suit your family at all. Unless you have the same children, which you probably don't. In which don't. case, fine. <laughs> and it also goes wrong because parenting plans really often contain provisions that are just unenforceable and that put parents in a position to create unnecessary conflict in the future. So you have these provisions that are not enforceable or that they're just not even relevant to your own parenting life. And now you've got a big long document of things to adhere to that aren't gonna work for you. That's true. And you know, it's okay to rely upon people that you know, friends, family, for advice about what's good in a parenting plan and what's not good in a parenting plan. But there's really nothing that should be set in stone that's not specific to your uh, dynamic. Before we get there, Neil, exactly what is parenting plan? A parenting plan is just a day to day. Uh, you know, where are the kids going to be? Uh, which parent is going to be responsible for what activity? Uh, just to monitor, you know, the, the kids, uh, really their location and their activity on any given day. Day to day schedule. And in my experience, and I am a wildly experienced cooperative divorce attorney and Wild. mediator, Wild. Where, where Neil is a wildly experienced courtroom attorney, but we have both found that the absolute most essential and first consideration in putting together your parenting plan should be this. How much structure versus how much flexibility is going to suit your own family's needs? And Neil and I were just talking about this. Neil had an example of a unique parenting plan that seemed to work very well in a way that we wouldn't have expected. Yeah, that's right. So I had uh, these two people. I, I, I was representing mom, um, and this was a very high conflict case. They fought about everything on the property side. So we're talking about spousal support, child support, who is going to get the house, who's going to get the retirement accounts, and it was a mess. Every single day was a new problem. They had two kids, and the parenting plan was one line, and one it worked. Line. It was the parents shall share custody as agreed, and it worked for them. And typically when we see people that are very high conflict, we would think, oh, you're going to need a very structured parenting plan. And this is a good example of why the parenting plan you think you need and the parenting plan you actually need might not be exactly the same. Exactly. So a highly structured parenting plan, Neil, might look like what? Well, you could have a 50-page parenting plan that notes for the next 10 years where the kid's going to be every calendar day of the year. <laughs> that might be a little extreme of an example, but you can be very, very specific from year to year in terms of where the kids are going to be from, uh, from day to day. When the child, for example, can have training wheels taken off their bikes. Exactly. I saw in a particular matter. Something like firearms in the home and when the children can have access to firearms crazy. That's its own topic. <laughs> For and, another day. And anything from days and weeks of pickup to what parents do when one or the other is out of town. 
Yeah. On the other hand, a really loosely structured parenting plan or a highly flexible parenting plan might look like what? Well, just like kind of the example that I gave, it can be very open-ended. Uh, it can be the parents shall share custody as they decide is best for the kids, or it can just be very loose, like week-to-week -week custody um, is fairly common without too much structure. And then the parents just kind of do what the parents do. And as long as it's good for the kids, then it works. And often in mediation, we see parents working together in a very unstructured parenting plan, perhaps because one parent has a travel schedule that's crazy, or that children are quite young, or I've even had parents that live on the same street or on the same block, and they have a very fluid arrangement. But typically what I see is that people fall somewhere between the range of highly structured to highly flexible. And the question that we recommend you ask yourself first is, where do you need to fall in that range of structure versus flexibility? So how much specific detail is going to be important to you versus how much flexibility are you going to want or need in your day-to-day -day arrangement? Typically, a high-conflict family would need more detail. You would think. But not always. And a, a family that's lower conflict or that has younger children often can work better on a less structured parenting plan. Understand, too, that those parenting plans are always going to be modifiable uh, given the kids' ages, their activity levels, where they are in school, just the ability for the parents after the, the, the divorce or after the end of the relationship kind of mellows out and they're yeah. communicating better. Sometimes those parenting plans get a little easier to handle. So if, you're, if your child is two and you're already deciding where the child is going to go to private high school or public high school, you might be getting a little bit ahead of yourself. Because a parenting plan is modifiable, focus on what you need right now and how much structure versus how much flexibility you might need right now. Absolutely. Now sometimes we have one parent that likes a lot of structure and one parent that likes a lot of flexibility. Often we have really different personalities in divorce. So I have two recommendations in that particular instance. And the first is to think about the temperament of your child. I have one child who is very structured and the first thing she likes to do every day is to think about what she's doing the day today and what her plans are. I have another child who's like a four-year-old fraternity boy. He'll just go anywhere, do anything, and have a great time. Into hazing rituals? Not yet. <laughs> Let's hope Hopefully not. never. Um, so with my children, because I have one that's highly structured and one that's really flexible, the parenting plan that works for them is going to be to adapt to the more structured child. Otherwise, if you're on a more flexible plan, then the child who's really structured is going to be more anxious and have a lot more concern. So first, think about the temperament of your child, also the age of your child, and the practicalities of your life. It's hard to have a very structured parenting plan if one parent travels all of the time, True. for example. Second, though, look at the temperament and the needs of the parents involved. One parent who's highly structured and one that's flexible, just like with two different children, erring on the side of the more structured parent can make you both more comfortable. Exactly. You don't need to structure every single minute, but at least providing some level of detail there that's going to make the more structured parent feel less anxious. And you can always add in flexibility. Just because your court order says that mom has Wednesday night dinner, if it comes time that mom's not able to do Wednesday night dinner or would like to do it on Tuesday nights, well, it's in the court order, so... It must be enforced, right? Unless they agree otherwise. Exactly. And very often we see parents agreeing otherwise. So putting together a parenting plan, instead of looking outward to what other people are doing or what you see in some format on the internet, we suggest that first you look inward at your own family, at your temperament and the temperaments of your children, at the practical needs of your life and the scheduling issues that you might run into, and look on a structure of structured to flexible and see where you think your family needs to fit. If you're highly structured, you're gonna want specific dates, hours, holidays, details. If you're loosely structured, you might just Say, for example, this is the parent that has Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, but everything else can be resolved by agreement. But starting by answering that threshold question is really one of the best ways to put together a parenting plan that's going to work for you and your children. 
and keep it loose. I mean, the things are going to change and, and look after the needs of your kids and uh, what they want, what they need, they'll tell you and you'll see it. So communicate together effectively. I know it's easier said than done uh, in this, these kinds of situations, but over time, things should get easier. Absolutely true and cannot overstate the importance of good communication. We hope that this has been helpful for you, our friends and our followers. If you'd like more information about how to create a parenting plan, we have this blog up at splitdecisions.pro along with our other videos, our live radio show podcasts, and lots of other information for you. And between now and next week, we look forward to engaging with you more on Facebook, which is Split Decisions Radio, or at Twitter at Split Decisions FM. Thank you very much, Divorce Network, and we will catch up with you next week. Have a great week.